Qantas helped design one of Boeing's most successful aircraft, the Boeing 777. But despite being involved from day one, they never ordered a single one. Surprising, right? You might wonder, why would an airline help shape a jet and then walk away from it? Especially when the 777 became one of the most trusted long-haul aircraft in modern aviation. Well, today we're pulling back the curtain. The answer isn't just one decision. It's a series of bold moves, risky bets, and a vision most airlines wouldn't dare follow. Let's rewind to the early 1990s. Boeing had a mission to create a fuel-efficient, long-range aircraft to dominate international skies. But instead of designing it behind closed doors, Boeing did something unheard of. They invited eight global airlines to help shape the aircraft. This collaboration became known as the Working Together Group. Qantas was one of those eight. Alongside big names like British Airways, United, American, and Japan Airlines, Qantas sat at the design table, helping define everything from cabin layout to cargo needs. That's right, Qantas was there from the beginning. They helped shape the Boeing 777's design. So naturally, people assumed they'd be first in line to order it. But when the 777 officially launched, Qantas quietly stepped aside. No orders. Nothing. It stunned the aviation world. Even as United and British Airways loaded their fleets with 777s, Qantas chose another path. Now here's the twist. Qantas didn't reject the 777 because it was a bad plane. Far from it. The 777 was a marvel. Twin engines. Long range. Excellent economics. But for Qantas, it just didn't fit. Why? It all comes down to geography. Qantas is based in Australia, a continent isolated by vast oceans. For Qantas, long haul doesn't mean a few hours across Europe. It means 15 hours across the Pacific or Indian Oceans. Their routes are extreme. So Qantas needed jets that could go the distance, nonstop. They needed aircraft with ultra-long range and serious passenger capacity. And in the 1990s, the 777 just didn't meet those needs. So instead, Qantas stuck with the aircraft that could, the Boeing 747. Yes, the iconic queen of the skies. Big, powerful, and proven. For decades, the 747 handled Qantas's longest routes, from Sydney to Los Angeles to London. Then came a second move, a bold one. Qantas became one of the few airlines to embrace the Airbus A380, the world's largest passenger jet, a double-decker giant. While other airlines hesitated, Qantas went all in. And why not? The A380 gave them exactly what they needed. Huge range, massive capacity, and a premium passenger experience. Perfect for transcontinental and transoceanic routes where every seat counts. Still, you might ask, what about fleet diversity? Didn't adding Airbus jets complicate things? Qantas had an answer. They believe in operating fewer aircraft types, but with better performance. Fewer models mean lower maintenance costs, better crew training, and simpler logistics. So, they doubled down on a high-capability fleet. 747s. A380S, and later, the Boeing 787 Dreamliner. But here's where it gets even more interesting. Fast forward to the 2010s. Boeing announces the 777X, a new version of the 777 with longer range and advanced tech. Suddenly, the aircraft Qantas helped design looked like it finally matched their needs. Was this the moment Qantas would join the 777 Club? At the same time, Qantas had launched a new project, Project Sunrise, a plan to fly nonstop from Sydney to New York, from Melbourne to London. We're talking flights up to 20 hours long, connecting Australia to the world without a single layover. No airline had done it before, and Qantas needed an aircraft capable of doing the impossible. Boeing pitched the 777X for Project Sunrise. On paper, it made sense. The range was close. The tech was modern. And it looked like a chance for Qantas to come full circle, finally flying the aircraft they helped create. But then came the setbacks. The 777X program ran into delays, manufacturing problems, certification issues, questions about readiness. And Qantas couldn't afford to wait. Meanwhile, Airbus stepped in with a different offer. They proposed modifying the A350-1000 to push the range even further. They tailored it to Qantas's needs. 
and they could deliver sooner. That was the game changer. For Qantas, the mission wasn't just flying far, it was flying first. In a race for the future of aviation, delays are dangerous. Qantas needed reliability, and Airbus had it. So the decision was made. For Project Sunrise, Qantas chose the Airbus A350. And once again, Boeing 777 was left off the list. Not because it wasn't good, but because it wasn't the right fit at the right time. And that's been the story all along. Let's be honest. Had Qantas bought the 777 back in the 90s, those jets would now be nearing retirement. Their investment might have aged out. Instead, by waiting and choosing aircraft with longer relevance, Qantas built a fleet ready for the future. Their A380s are back in the skies after the pandemic. Their 787s are leading long-haul routes. And soon, the A350s will break records with the world's longest commercial flights. Some call it luck. But this isn't luck. It's long-term vision. It's leadership willing to think decades ahead. By not buying the 777, Qantas avoided a costly transition later. They saved on replacements, on training, on maintenance. And now they're positioned to lead global aviation into its next chapter. So next time you fly Qantas or watch a Boeing 777 soar overhead, remember this story. It's not about who built the best plane. It's about making the right decision at the right moment, no matter how surprising it may seem. And that's why Qantas helped design the 777, but never bought it. If you found this story fascinating, imagine what else the skies are hiding. Subscribe to Skyline for more aviation mysteries, history, and breakthroughs you've never heard before. And hey, drop a comment below. Do you think Qantas made the right choice? Thanks for watching. Stay curious, stay sharp, and keep looking up.